The battlefield hero returns home only to find his mother starved to death. His other relatives were also frowsing to death at home. This story is set in Ireland. Feeney, a warrior soldier, sneaks back to his home in Ireland one day. He hopes to take his mother and brother with him to America. But when he actually returns home, things have changed. His stubborn mother, unwilling to accept charity from the church, gets a fever and dies of starvation. His brother, who would not submit to English colonial rule, was sentenced to death by hanging by a judge. The only survivors of Feeney's family were his brother's wife and son. Feeney saw a glimmer of hope and decided to take them and flee Ireland. But that day they fled was particularly cold. A squad of vigilantes suddenly arrived at Feeney's house. The vigilantes rode in with their horses and guns and then tipped the Feeney's that roof over. Feeney's angry nephew rushed out to resist but was shot dead on the spot. His sister-in-law and niece were thrown out of the house barefoot. Feeney was also arrested on the spot as a fugitive. Feeney saw his family killed, so he took the opportunity to escape from the prison. But by the time he escaped to his home again the next day, his only sister-in-law was huddled in a corner with her niece, frowning to death. Feeney's face was expressionless at that moment, but I understood what he wanted to do from the sad and determined look in his eyes. Feeney wanted revenge from this moment on. He wanted to take revenge on all those who had a direct relationship with the death of his relatives. Unfortunately, the first person he chose was his cousin's uncle from the village. He was also an executioner for the local landlord. Although he looks honest, but in fact all the things in the village are secretly reported by him. Of course, his hint is also very exciting for the villagers. Feeney arrives at his cousin's house on horseback and with a pig in tow. Feeney easily cut off his head. Then Feeney put the pig's head on the top of his neck. The cousin's head was hung on the house where Feeney's sister-in-law and niece had frowned to death. The cousin confessed to Feeney's relatives in this way. The ruthless Irish wolf soon began to seek a second target for revenge. He was an overbearing English judge. He could decide at will whether a man should live or die with a single mouth. And every time he told people in a very serious way, it's not that I'm going to banish or hang you. It's just that you're being punished for breaking the law. But he never tried the offenders according to the relevant provisions. He was just a lackey of the colonial rulers of England, and a thug who used the law to kill people. Feeney's brother was also hanged by this cruel judge. Feeney hid in the judge's office in advance for revenge. He grabbed a prepared rope and ended the life of the judge who hanged countless Irish people. The judge's body was hung like a cross in the window outside his office. Of course Feeney's revenge wasn't over yet. The next target of his revenge became the Christian church. In Ireland during the Great Famine, the Irish and the English were not of the same religion. But if they wanted to conquer a people, they would have to rule them spiritually. And so it came to pass, the Christian churches organized by the English would give free broth to the starving Irish every week. But the only way they could give you the gravy was if you were converted and be baptized into Christianity. And Feeney's mother was a devout Catholic. She was brutalized to death by the church here and didn't drink their broth. The church did all of this and Feeney decided that he wanted revenge. Another one of those weekends has arrived. Hungry Irish people Saturday on their knees in front of the priest and listened to him ramble on for a long time about the teachings of Christianity. Feeney came to the priest without saying a word and took the broth and drank it. Then Feeney pulls the priest who comes to stop him out of the house. The film does not specify what the end of the priest is, but we all know what Feeney has done based on his character. Feeney's next target of revenge is the big landlord and his agent. Let's start with the story of Keneally, the landlord's agent. Keneally personally took away all the land from Feeney's family before. So that night Feeney quietly hid in Keneally's stable. He killed Keneally while he was visiting the horses. Then he stuffed Keneally's body into the grain pile. The grain that he had obtained by oppressing the suffering Irish farmers. Feeney let him die in the grain pile. Soon Feeney's death alerted Kill Michael, a large landed aristocrat. Kill Michael believed that most of the peasants deserved to die because the land was taxed per head to the king. So Kill Michael wanted a lot of land, but it did not need so many people. So we see the opening scene of the story where the Irish are colonized and persecuted. At this point, Kill Michael is preparing to ship all of his newly plundered grain to the crown of England although there are hungry Irishmen standing outside his house. But it was none of his business. Kill Michael arranges for the sheriff to take the grain to the docks with 20 or so policemen in tow. They were actually trying to get Feeney's attention. So many deaths in this town. They had already guessed who Feeney's last target would be. So they set up a trap at the hotel and waited for Feeney's arrival. However, one of the police officers in the ambush was Feeney's friend from the war. He saved Feeney's life at the critical moment. 
and successfully abducted the noble landlord. The way the noble landowner died is even more interesting. We can't see a sturdy black horse running by. On the horse Saturday, a man wearing a hood. He looked like Feeney, so the crowd rushes to shoot him. But the big landed nobleman thus ended his sinful life. In fact, the men who were avenged by Feeney deserved and did not deserve to die. They were just executioners who helped to commit murder under the dark and brutal colonial rule. Even if they died, the colonists could replace them with new ones and continue the miserable oppression. But someone has to wake up in this world. Someone has to fight back. Someone has to win this tragic and dark reign. The film is called Black 47. I wish everyone's life could be treated equally. Every life is so precious.